One of the big challenges with firewalls is managing rules. Not only is the ordering of rules important, but you also want to avoid duplicating rules as that would add to the load and affect user performance. Now, OpenSense doesn't offer separators for rules, but it does provide categories to help rules stand out. But how do you create categories and how do you apply these to rules to make firewall management easier? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, the first thing to do is to create some categories. To do that, you'll want to navigate to Firewall and then Categories. And although I've got a list of categories here, these are ones that I've had to create. In other words, there aren't any actual built-in ones. You've got to create your own. So to create a category, click on the plus sign here. Then we'll give this a meaningful name. But what's most important is actually the color. Now, to set the color, what you could do is just click in this field here or click on the drop down menu. The result is the same. You get this palette, if you will, to work with. So we've got basic colors that we can pick from. But we've also got a list of saved colors. So these are colors that have been generated over time by us. So you could pick out, say, red, for example. You could have a green color and so on. Now, if you want to create your own custom colors, though, I tend to find that this slider system can be a bit fiddly because the dialog box that we've got here can easily disappear. Uh, oh, there you go. So it just suddenly disappeared. I've, I've clicked on somewhere and all of a sudden it just disappeared. Uh, it's most common if I drag a slider. Uh, going with that one. Yeah, it's, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's as if I'm... Yeah, it's... I'm not, not overly impressed by that, let's put it that way. But what we've got is some hexadecimal numbers in here. And it's probably easy just to create your own colours if you want by going to a site like this one here, for example. So here we've just got a slider. So we could move this about to pick different colours. So I could go for that one there, which is a kind of a cyan colour. Now, what I want is just the hexadecimal part there. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that into there, return. And there's our cyan colour. I'll click on save. And there we go. We've now got our actual category there. So we're getting seven per page. And you can build up as many categories as you want. It really depends on, well, how many different types of rules you need, I suppose. So now that we've got some categories, we can start applying them to actual rules. And you can do that when you're actually creating the rule, or you can actually edit existing rules and apply categories to them. Basically, it's the same process. In this case, I'm going to pick out one of the rules here for the internal DNS server. So I'll click on Edit. Scroll down to here where it says Category. Click on the field, and it brings up a list of all of the categories that we've created. Now, there's our test one that we've just created recently, but this is for access to an internal DNS server. So I'm going to select that category there. I could, if I wanted to, actually assign more categories, but I want to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm just going to click on Save. And what that does is it actually puts this little green dot against the actual rule. So that's the color of the actual category. I mean, I can hover over it and it tells you this is for internal access. And then it's just a matter of going through the other rules that I've got, because once this is all completed, things will, will actually stand out a lot easier. I mean, as another example, I'll pick out this one for internet access instead. Going out to category again. So this is for internet access. Click on save. And you can see that one has got a yellow dot. So it's starting to make it a bit easier to actually visualize what these rules are doing, what they're allowing access to. I mean, I've got some meaningful descriptions, but the colors for me are gonna stand out. And once this is finished, it's gonna make managing these actual rules a whole lot simpler. Well, I finished applying the actual categories to the rules here. And although this is a simple interface, because there aren't many rules and there aren't many categories, hopefully you can see how things stand out a bit easier now. And that's because we're now grouping rules together. So I've got a group of rules here in green 
and the group of rules here in yellow. So these are for internal access, these are for external access. If I'm going to create a new service on the internal network, well, a rule for that goes among these ones. If on the other hand, it's for a service on the internet, the rule needs to go here. And the actual ordering of these rules is extremely important, especially when you're allowing access to the internet because they're not all that specific usually. So for example, we've got a rule here allowing access to web servers. Now, if I were to grab that rule, let's say we move it up to here. Without the colouring, it may not necessarily stand out so easily, but with the colouring, that's automatically telling me that rule is out of place. It shouldn't be there. It should be down there, not up here. The reason that's important is because this rule doesn't have a set destination. It's allowing access to anything. It doesn't mean you know, specifically devices on the internet. It literally means anything. So if this firewall, for example, is listening on this interface, we've now granted access to the firewall for users on this uh, actual network interface. If there's a bug in the software, they could potentially bypass authentication and then start administering the actual firewall. And that is something you certainly don't want. You could be allowing access to other web servers on your internal network when they're actually restricted and so on. So for me, this helps things stand out much, much easier and I can move it back. And the reason I bring that one up as an example is just because there are firewalls out there uh, by certain vendors where the actual performance is terrible, quite frankly. They're, they tend to be the low end ones, but the performance is really, really bad. They don't handle a lot of rules. And one of the best practices is to put your most used rules at the top of the actual firewall. But you really need ordering like this to prevent allowing access to something that people shouldn't be allowed access to. As I pointed out there, where you could get access to the actual firewall itself. So by grouping all these rules together and having the colors, that's something else that will help prevent because your rules are just going to stand out. And so to me, it's, it's not the best solution. I don't have separators, which I would have preferred, but also having said that, because I've got the colors, um, it does make it easier to understand what goes where. Be very useful if you've got like different rules for different departments, for example, you could group those together. If you're going to be creating new rules for a certain group, it would be easier to just glance over those group of rules to see if you've already got a rule that exists rather than creating a completely new rule and just adding to the load of the firewall. So yeah, even though we don't have separators, I don't quite like these categories because it, it makes things a whole lot easier to manage. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.